maximum proficiency as an air gun. Natural gifts, like quickness of eye, deafness of hand, are very desirable attributes. But every air gunner can improve his efficiency and increase his accuracy by learning and practicing the drill routine, which you will see on the screen. First of all, I will show you the customary procedure of air gunner members of a bomber operational crew. From the experience gained by operational air gunners over a long period, the drill and routine you will see subsequently in close-up scenes has been produced. For the moment, we will follow our operational air gunners and see what they do and the reason for the procedure. The man behind the guns is the air gunner, but the man behind the air gunner is the armorer. So we commence with a visit to the armory. The armorer's responsibility is to see that the guns and turret are in first class order. The ammunition tanks loaded with the correct ammunition for the operation. But the experienced air gunner leaves nothing to chance. And the usual practice is to pay a visit to the armory before checking up the turrets a couple of hours previous to taking off. The experienced air gunner is not even satisfied with the 700. His alone is the final responsibility for the efficiency of his armament. To find out a slight error on the part of somebody else when a hundred miles away from base is no satisfaction. The tail gunner is making his way aft, pausing to have a look at the recuperator, the key piece of the hydraulic system which provides power to operate a turret. The position of the air gunner in his turret tends to individual methods, some of which may be good, but a standard practice is just as essential in air gunnery as it is in naval gunnery. As our armament increases and new types are introduced, this standard procedure may vary from time to time. For the purpose of this film, the Fraser Nash turret as fitted to Wellington aircraft is employed. As soon as he gets in the turret, the gunner checks his ammunition, both tanks of course. He knows the 700 states that all tanks are loaded, but, uh, well, you can't be too certain. It wouldn't be the first time a gunner has found one tank empty. You will note that this gunner leaves his ammunition belt over the duct, which enables him to load up quicker than if he has to use the loading cable and pull it right up from the tank. He puts one round over the retaining pole and proceeds to cock both his guns. He replaces his tools in the stowage. He then checks his reflector sight. In the nose turret, the same inspection is being carried out. This gunner also checks his ammunition to see if it is correct for the particular operation. It will be noticed that the nose gunner has left his ammunition down in the tanks, so he uses the arming cable to pull it up. threading it through the feed opening and down the duct. Note the absence of hurry or flurry. Loading is a simple operation when carried out slowly and deliberately. This is a good habit of mind, which with practice makes all movements accurate and sure. The arming cable is then attached to the open end of the links, and he makes certain that the hook is pointing the same way as the bullets. The rounds are then drawn up the duct into the feed opening, one round being placed over the retaining pole. The breech cover is closed and the arming cable returned to its correct stowage. The lids of the ammunition tanks being replaced. While the gunners are in the turret, the ground crew are cleaning the purse baits. Many a dead fly on the perspex has been mistaken for an aircraft. Perspex should be kept equally as clean as a good motor driver keeps his windscreen. After inspection and ensuring that fire and safe units are ground crew and satisfied the others. 